Hello, it is Sunday and it is time for my mental health vlog. I have not felt that great this week and most of that is I'm adjusting to a new medication. So for a while I've been on three different medications for diabetes. Um, I've been on metformin for as long as I can remember. Um, Jardiance was added a couple years ago and Trilicity was added a couple years ago. And my A1C is getting lower and it's getting, it's moving in the right direction, which is great. Um, but I did talk to the doctor about maybe looking at Ozempic um, because I would like to try something different to see if I can get some more movement in my A1C. And ideally the goal is to get my A1C low enough where I don't need to be on three fucking different medications for diabetes. So started that this week. Um, I'm on the 0.5 milligram. I think that's, they usually start people with 0.25, but she started me on the 0.5. And um, first couple of days, the only thing I really noticed, and this is graphic, but I'm sorry, you know how I am. Um, I was pooping and my poop smelled like my grandparents' poop. And that sounds stupid, but I distinctly remember my grandparents on my mom's side. Like their bathrooms always had a very distinct smell. And like, I know what that is now. That's just, that's that's their poop smell. So that's what their bathrooms like smelled like. And it's not like rancid. You know, I'm not trying to say my grandparents were disgusting because they absolutely were not. But my poop smells, has that same smell. So that's the only thing I noticed um, with the first couple of days. But then I started to notice like my appetite was just really not there. Like I wasn't super hungry. And when I was eating, it seemed more out of necessity than joy. And mm, like today, I we got coffee this morning and the only thing I've had to eat today, it's about five o'clock, um, is we got a smoothie and I got some protein boosts in it because I needed something. But the idea of eating anything just sounded disgusting. So that is evidently a side effect to, uh, to adjust to. I talked to a friend of mine that's been on this and I, I didn't even know my mom had been on this. So I talked to her a little bit. So we kind of compared stories and whatnot. However, I will say, um, I've already dropped a few pounds and I am hovering in like the, between 258 and 262. Um, which if y'all don't know, 250s is kind of foreign territory for me. Um, it's been a really long time since I've been in the 250s and um, a lot of people take Ozempic for the goal of, of weight loss. And I'm not expecting to have any kind of great weight loss because Trulicity, which I have been on, and the Ozempic, which I just moved to, the chemical that everyone loses weight, that causes everyone to lose weight or whatever, that's kind of the same in both of them. So my body's already used to that chemical with the Trulicity. So I'm not expecting this huge 30, 40 pound weight loss like a lot of people who are on Trulicity are getting. I'm specifically looking at it for diabetes. If I lose a few pounds, that's just a bonus, but I'm specifically looking at it to try and decrease my diabetes because I'm tired of being on so many different medications. Like there's a scene in Family Guy where and this is old, where Brian the dog is dating a much older woman and um, he calls her on the phone to see what she's doing and Stewie's like, oh, I'm just rearranging my pills for the week, organizing my pills for the week, you know, making fun of her age. But the reality is every time I sit down and have to do my pills for the week, I think about that scene because I hate doing my pills for the week. <sighs> I mean, doing your medication is part of your self-care and it's really critical part of your self-care because if you're not on the medications your doctors have prescribed you and you're not taking care of them then you're not taking care of yourself so <sighs> speaking of meds i finally got my adhd med in stock this week i've had a lot of trouble with my my psychiatrist i've had a large a lot of trouble with walgreens trying to get it filled um and ended up calling around and finding some at walmart and um of course, then I had to deal with, you know, my, my psychiatrist getting the prescription back over to Walmart, which took a lot longer than it should have. Um, but I was able to finally get a hold of somebody at Walmart. They did still have stock and I got the information processed. And I like, as soon as it was ready, I'm like, I zoomed over there. I'm like, yep, I need this. I need this today. Cause like, even my boss was like, something's up with you. Something's not right. And I'm like, no, something is not right. So. 
the but the house continues to be a money pit. We are currently waiting on a check from Fidelity Investments that pretty much took out a giant chunk of my 401k that we need to um, turn around and put back into the house to cover some water damage that we found from poorly installed windows and we need to replace the windows and we can only afford right now to replace the windows on one story of the house. So that is what we're doing. And then my fiance today was trying to install a, a, a handrail in the, um, up the stairway and he kept running into all kinds of problems. And he's even like, maybe we should just take the loss and sell the house. And one, I don't want to move again. Two, we can't afford to move again. And three, I really don't want to take a loss. It's like this house is a money pit. But that doesn't mean if we were to sell it, it'd probably a short sale. That doesn't mean that we would find anything better or be in a better position somewhere else. There's still too many unknowns. So he's super frustrated right now. So I asked him like, let's put a pin in that and let's talk about it when we're not irritated with the house or frustrated. However, this is funny. Um, my doctor told me I need to get an eye exam. And since we moved, I needed a new eye doctor. So I found one that was close, but I took my insurance and had an appointment yesterday. I got there and I filled out all of the new patient, pa new patient paperwork. <sighs> I wish there was just like universal new patient paperwork that like everybody could use and we just scan your phone when you go to a new doctor and boom, they have it. There's a million dollar idea. Somebody invent that. Okay, anyway, so she's entering all of my information into the computer, the little receptionist lady. Oh my God. What? You bought my boyfriend's house last year. What's like, on Via Linda? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I don't like him. <laughs> and it's like, I really did. And she's like, what, what, what's wrong? And it's like, I really could have just laid into her. And it was just like, you know what? It is not her fault. It is, it would benefit nothing to, to just dump all of my frustrations with this house on this girl, just because she happens to know someone who's responsible. And, um, so I, I just told her, I said, the, um, the items that were, there are a lot of expensive items that we have found that we needed to replace that were hidden really, really well, so well that they didn't get caught up in an inspection. And then I said, be sure to tell them thanks for the fridge because the fridge got abandoned and didn't work and it cost us money to have a hauled it away and they had told us that it worked. So that was frustrating. That's one of the many, 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 many things frustrating with this house, but I don't, I don't want to sit here and bitch about it. It doesn't, it doesn't help. Hmm. But anyway, it was just, it was, the irony was just like, I don't like him. I'm like, he's, he's so-and-so's brother who, you know, Jessica Jimenez is the name of the person that had this house before. I know that name because I hate that name now. Anyway, um, I'm like, oh, Jessica Jimenez's brother? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I don't like her either. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, good news is my eyes are actually getting better instead of worse, which I did not expect because they had been on a real downward trend. If you recall, a year and a half ago, the eye doctor told, asked me after I got my eyes checked, have you had a recent head injury? Which didn't bode well. <laughs> So my doctor has been wanting to keep eye on my, um, on my, uh, prescription. So she said, you need to get an eye, eye exam and you need to send that to me. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So I did that and I'll send that to her soon. And I already got to order some new glasses. Um, I had my son over on Friday night, which was nice. And then after I picked him up, uh, my ex sent me, forwarded me a letter that we got from a teacher, um, that indicated that my son has been disrespectful in class, disruptive in class, talking back in class, moving around in class, all the things that I completely believe. Um, and my ex was like, you handle this. So I got some background information because I needed to know what exactly I was dealing with. And this was the first time we'd gotten a notice from this teacher, but my son has had issues with some of the teachers who are of Turkish descent and there are a couple. Um, so we talked about um, respect and I essentially told him, because he doesn't like the teacher at all, and 
doesn't think that she's right most of the time. And I said, well, that is her classroom. You are a student in her classroom. And I said, if she says the sky is purple, you say, yes, ma'am, it's purple. And as long as you're in that class, the sky is purple. When you're out of that class, it can be any color you want it to be. But when you were in that class, the sky is purple. So, you know, he went back and forth. And one of the things he said was, because we talked about dis disrespectful responses, I often regret a lot of the things I say. And my fiance was like, bingo, there it is. There is the core to all the issues. You are not giving any thought to what comes out of your mouth before you say it. So I gave him the talk about shooting a bullet out of a gun, you can't put it back in, or, or you know, breaking a plate, you can't put it back together and make it as good. You know, once it's said, it's said. Once those words are out there, they're out there, you can't take them back. So, and I also told him that I'm gonna follow up with the teacher in a couple of weeks to see if the behavior is better. Now, of course, my ex was like, so what did you take away? What did you punish him with? I'm like, I didn't. I said, I didn't see a point in yelling or screaming or taking anything away, because that doesn't work. And he's like, oh, so you just talk. So it's same old, same old. So he's obviously unhappy that I didn't do more. But I handled it in the way that I wanted to handle it. And what I told my ex when I dropped my son off this past weekend, or this weekend, was clearly the yelling and screaming and taking things away is working really well. You know, kind of sarcastically. I'm like, that's clearly not working. So we have to try something different. So let's try this. He's like, well, it's not going to work. I'm like, okay, well, the other thing's not working either. So might as well give it a try. So I will be a little bit more involved um, with my son and his relationship with his teachers because I want to I want to keep that on track because the last thing I want my son to turn into is my father. Last thing I want to turn into is my father. So how we talk to people is really critical, which I'm really surprised that there's an issue because he's been always really accepting and understanding and appreciative of, of, of the people around him. But uh, I guess he's just being maybe a little too blunt, a little too curt. And don't get me wrong, I'm not opposed to him, you know, challenging the system if something really is wrong or something really is broken, but there are ways you have to do it and disrupting a class isn't really going to be effective in any way, shape, or form. So, let's fix that first, then we can work on the bigger issues. Um, FD Designs, my patch business, has been really busy, which is nice. Um, in fact, I just worked on some orders to get out in the mail on Tuesday because Monday's a holiday. And, um, yeah, that's about it right now. So, adjusting to some new meds, trying to get this house to a place where we can at least like it. Um, dealing with my son growing up and, and introducing some new social challenges that we have to work on. And, um, I think that's about it. All right, I'm going to go lay down I think I hope you guys have a great week um, enjoy the long weekend and um, I will check in with you next week and of course check on your friends make sure they're doing okay check on your loved ones make sure they're doing okay and check on yourself what do you need I need to lay down I get waves of nauseousness and I just got one so adjusting to this adjusting to this new med is hard anyway okay Bye, guys.